Hello everybody and this here and here we go starting to design our little kit bush straight away inside 3D code using the sketch tool and using just the projections from uh, top and side and just uh, here I'm thinking about the shapes uh, to create a city design and what I found is that you can you can have a lot of ideas here. You can explore a lot of shapes, a lot of uh, different buildings. I uh, spent like almost like a week playing with shapes, and I'm building this kit bash slowly myself. It's still not ready, so I'm not really uh, kind of advertising it. But eventually, I'll finish it. I just uh, want to have it uh, available to build my own kind of city projects. And the idea is here that I make these guys uh, pretty quick and then I drop them in Blender to get the final shape. And the reason is, the reason I don't do it in Blender uh, because I just cannot design it in Blender that fast. Uh, and uh, I've tried it, I've tried it, I really tried to switch to Blender to, to, for everything, but at the end of the day, I still feel like it's really code is way, Way more, more con, way more convenient, way way simpler to use uh, for concept design. Uh, even though it might not give you the the cleanest, uh, nicest mesh out. For example, here I use the voxel sketch, so you should have really used uh, a hard surface sketch there, not voxel, uh, to get a cleaner shape. But hard surface sketch just just appeared at the time. In uh, 3D code, hard surface sketch will create a surface model, not a voxel model, and the surface model is really clean. And here I'm using the voxel hide to cut some shapes, uh, but I didn't want to cut, you know, through the whole mesh like I would do in a sketch tool. I'm using the voxel hide to cut, could cut, some, you know, just some parts uh, at the top, a bit more int intricate parts here. Like I'm cutting this kind of window, but then it cuts through the whole mesh, which not always ideal. So I want them to also hide it from the side. And then I'm just doing some cuts and see how that affects the, the building. And to be honest, even using bullions and turning it into a similar shape inside a blend, it takes quite a bit of time. And so what I really like here is you can rotate the sketch and that really gives you quite an unpredictable result inside 3D code. So it really rotates the whole sketch and you get like a live update of the whole design. It's just amazing. Like I was quite blown away when I experimented a little bit I just rotated by rotating the sketch and seeing new ideas just pop there um, out of nowhere. There's very little effort. The only thing that kind of gets uh, a bit annoying that if you rotate it, <clears throat> if you rotate it a lot, it will be it will get to a point that uh, all the sketch sketches were rotated, so you no longer really understand where they are positioned at, and you have to kind of reset everything and re re redo it completely. Just trying to figure out where to place these little details, so I'm just trying to go by this uh, twenty eighty rule, right? So even like more like 5% by 95% rules. So I'll try to add details at 5% um, places and keep everything else clean of details to keep it solid, like some kind of space space where it will not maybe have a lot of windows. It'll be like a production facility on some asteroid or planet. And doing this archetypical, archetypical long windows, long thin windows. And using the walk side on that second building. And then I decided to make a new building. Just reusing the sketch, rotating it. Scaling it in different directions, uh, removing some parts, that leftover parts, uh, with the rectangular tool.
and just looking at this whole piece. So, and what can I contribute to it? And the change, uh, the shape changed a lot, right? It's pretty much an entirely new building. Uh, again, done in a few seconds. Now I can see it's getting a bit awkward when I look from the top. The sketch has been rotated. You can do now in the new versions of 3D code, you can do a high quality sketch, meaning like you can do a high resolution sketch because right now I'm dealing with the planes, which are 256 pixels by 256 pixels. And that uh, essentially uh, um, makes it hard sometimes to do really thin shapes. Uh, but now you can also do 512 pixels by 512 pixel sketch. It's much high quality. However, also the high quality attributes to having a sharper, sharper angles, like on a, a lower quality uh, sketch, you can have uh, like more of a gentle, more gentle curves. On a high quality sketch, everything is pretty sharp. So you can see here, I've divided this, I split this building into multiple blocks uh, just across. And I'm dropping these holes here and there in a fairly random fashion. I'm just trying to make a variety, like a, a variety spread of little detail. I'm trying not, make, not to make it too busy. And leave a lot of space, just um, a lot of rest areas without any details at all. I did add this huge card in the end, which I'm not too sure about it, to be honest. But I decided to have it for, again, for variation purpose. There we go, we have the building. And I'm using the box side to add extra details. Because now at least we have all, all the shading happening, so it's a bit easier to understand what's going on. So I moved it across, so I moved it away from the sketch area. And then I create a new uh, layer and I want to make a different building. So I fill that hole, I trim some parts. And I decided that that could be a different building because I wasn't sure if that having a gigantic hole in the middle was a good idea or not. And yeah, they all look almost exactly the same. So the right way is to kind of then you know use a bit more voxel height and uh, play around with that. So here I'm using the pose tool to start to change the overall shape. So I decided to make it a, you know, a higher, a bit of a higher building. And in fact, I decided to make it a whole skyscraper in, in the end. And I was able to create different styles of the sci-fi building. So this is one particular style with this language, a shape language. But then I had stuff which was more a bit more rectangular, less angulated. Uh, and then you, you try you try new and new shapes and to look for the sci-fi that you like the most. Usually the first try will be not that great, the second try will be a bit better, the third one will be better, and you know more and more. So you can see here I use the pose tool to stretch that uh, top part of the building to make it bigger, taller. And I'm doing, doing the same thing here, just uh, scaling this up to make a taller sketch. And I'm scaling each plane. You can, I can actually pick the whole sketch and scale it without scaling each plane. I just forgot about it. You can click that transform all button at the top. 
So you can see here, I have now a tall sketch, which is like just amazing. The, the ability that you can scale it, make it as long as you need, as high as you need, uh, change the proportions so you're not bound to the square. Uh, it's incredibly powerful tool because uh, in ZBrush, there is a shadow box tool that does a similar thing, much worse. Uh, originally, I was using shadow box in ZBrush a long time ago, but it's not really usable. A uh, sketch tool in 3D code beats it. Uh, hands down, and here I've pretty much uh, closing to the end. I've done a few ideas, so I have the style. I uh, have a little, have a little kit bash set with which I can play on, and that um, oh, that really concludes the video. So thank you all for watching, and uh, see you next time.